Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. This is Suhini from South Bay, California and welcome to today's session. These technical videos are meant for topics which are otherwise harder to grasp, especially for someone who's trying to get into this field for the first time. So today's topic would be the common buzzwords that we hear, at least in the Silicon Valley, which are machine learning, artificial intelligence, data science, and cognitive systems. So I will explain examples, we're giving examples, how each and every realm, each and every topic is, is dissimilar from one another, and hopefully point you in some direction so that then you can go and do your own research to learn more about each and every topic. These videos are meant to be short, crisp, concise, and explanatory to make these topics, which are otherwise pretty hard and dense, to be as easy as possible. So let's get to it. The first word that I wanted to explain is machine learning. Now, what does machine learning really mean? In a sense, it's any decision-making system, typically, that, that we use uh, in our day-to-day -day life. Uh, I googled and even uh, checked the, the definition on Wikipedia, and it says the concept of training a machine using a set of rules or data and testing it on similar structure data. What that means is this is a very pedagogical way. So whatever you, you see is what you get. So once you've been trained with a set of data or with a set of rules, you know to behave in a similar way when you're going to be making a decision in the future. Uh, one very easy example of this is what I wanted to share with you is object detection. And this is for uh, the, the field of autonomous drive or anybody who wants to do a project on object detection. Typically, what happens is you have a set of training data from which you, your machine learns a set of rules that a pedestrian or a, an object or a, a car looks like this. It's the, the texture and the, and the features. So there are some local features and then some, some global features that represent or make it this particular object. So in this example that I'm showing, this is actually from a latest paper that we have, and I will link uh, the paper in the description box below. This Algorithm is trained for detecting pedestrians. So you see a bounding box around the pedestrians, and then there are these skeletal features that are extracted from them as well. The goal here is if I have a good amount of training data, and if I have enough compute power, I should be then able to detect pedestrians in any future instances. So as a training data set teaches me a set of rules, and from there, I can then generalize it for any data set coming in the future. So in a sense, machine learning algorithm is only as smart as its training data, if you're looking at the, the, the supervised uh, paradigm. Now, machine learning algorithms typically have three paradigms. One is supervised, where it, which is typically uh, the example could be learning a, a language from a, a new tutor. And Otherwise, it could be unsupervised, where you say birds of the same feather flock together, or it could be weakly supervised. Now, let's go over what do these three actually mean. Supervised learning. So let's say you are learning a new language and you have a tutor, right? So the tutor has, has told you how each and every words, what each and every words mean, how to put them together. So once you've taken a few classes, you should be able to then hold a conversation with someone else in the near future. So that is very much of a supervised data or the training uh, example that, that I told you that you have a set of ex set of rules or, or amount of data to extrapolate these rules from and learn from, and then you apply it, apply yourself going forward. So this is supervised machine learning. Now, what is unsupervised machine learning? Again, if you don't have the tutor, how are you ever going to learn this new language? Well, there's body language, there's gesticulations, right? If you, if you say eat or if I say uh, drink, uh, so then people are supposed to understand. So these gesticulations, these are similar patterns that are there inherently in, in all different languages. And that could be, is that so in, in these cases would be the, the ways in which you convey your information. So you don't have any knowledge about this new language, but using some methods which allude towards a particular word or a particular statement, you can still get your information across. So that would be unsupervised learning as an example. And then comes weekly supervised learning. 
which is actually a, a mixture of, of both worlds. So some amount of training and then some amount of, uh, you know, hand waving and gesticulation. So this would be if you are in a in a new country with uh, with a new language and there if you're trying to use uh, Google Translate. So you, you learn a, a couple of words and then you're trying to put them together in a word and then trying to ask, what's the time? Can I get some water or something like that? So best of both worlds is in, when you have a little amount of, of training data, but still you're trying to do your job as to conveying your information. That would be a typically weekly supervised. So this, in a nutshell, is machine learning. And you have to remember, a machine learning algorithm is only as smart as its training data, right? Yeah, uh, I mean, if you are not given anything, you can only come up with some patterns uh, in, 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 in the underlying data sets, which is, is generally the unsupervised trends, which is clustering or k-means, uh, those, those sort of class of methods. But if you have to understand the broad umbrella, um, that's that's what it is. You, it'll either be supervised, it will be unsupervised, or it will be weakly supervised. Now, let's go into artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence, on the other hand side, is the broad sense. So it's it's the broad umbrella that uh, encompasses everything. It's, it's, it's the broad umbrella about machine learning, about data science, about cognitive systems, and, and everything. And again, what does it really mean? Uh, and again, I, I Googled and, and Wikipedia it, and it says... Artificial intelligence in the broader sense is the capabilities of a machine to carry out a task in a way that we would consider smart. Hmm. That is the kicker. We would consider smart. That means it is able to make, it is capable of making very smart decisions, you know, with, without having any, um, uh, any restrictions on how the data is structured. Is it well structured or not? Doesn't matter. The system knows what sort of next step to take in such a case. Now, typically, such systems, uh, the, the, these models, they operate in a state space sort of a paradigm. Um, ideally, these all AI systems or all artificial intelligence systems, they are action oriented. So that for every single action, there is a payoff function uh, that the system wants to then maximize. And ideally, the whole system, uh, the, the process of the system to learn is in, in order to learn new actions or new states, right? So essentially, let's let's take an example. Now, a, a very good example for, um, for for this would be if I can pull up. Yes, babies learning. That is the best example in the real world about artificial intelligence. So in a typical example, think about it when uh, a baby is for the first time learning what happens if you touch a hot object, right? So the input data, if you think, means touch the hot object and generates pain. So you touch it, you generate pain. But what does the child actually learn? The child learns, do not touch hot surface. So you see how the, the format in which the input data was and the format in which the data was output or the knowledge was built is different. Now, this is exactly the difference from machine learning system. In machine learning system, the format in which the data is input and the format in which the information or the output is processed is generally in the same domain or in the same dimension. So ideally, if it would be a machine learning system, you would say touch hot, hot object, generate pain. That's all. But here the child learned touch hot, hot object, generates pain, so never touch a hot object. So you see the, the information that got generated was of a totally different domain. And how can an artificial intelligence system now help us? Now taking the machine learning system or the example of object detection that I told you. So let's say for the same system that I have trained on pedestrian detection or pedestrian detection or uh, you know cars detection, what happens if I have a situation like this? So if I have an ostrich crossing the road or to make things even worse, if I have a sofa by the road, what should I do? Now, I know that what, how, to do, how to behave if I have an object, which I should not hit, but ideally uh, a couch is not such a detrimental object, but an ostrich is. So how would a system that has been trained on something like just an, a pedestrian detection or other cars can automatically process what to do if it gets these situations like an ostrich or another object on, on the street that you don't behave, you don't hope to see. So in, in these cases, it would be an artificial intelligence that would that would ideally know how to behave. And again, uh, the technology right now is still being built so that such things should be capable in, in, the, in the next few years. I will link some of the upcoming works in the description box. Please check, check them out.
The next field is about cognitive systems. So a cognitive system is typically an information system that deals with knowledge generation on the basis of perception, reasoning, learning, and prior models. Now, what does this mean? This means such a system is not as much action-oriented as my AI system that I just told you about, but it essentially processes information in one form and generates knowledge in completely another form. So it's sort of how we create the holes or, or we interpolate information in our brain. We do this automatically without even knowing, but whenever we want to automate this process and make a machine learning model out of it, we have to be uh, you know, inherently um, observant of that. A typical example in this case is, in, in, is, is where vision is processed by the brain. So let's say a person had 20-20 had vision before, but now all of a sudden, again, vision is deteriorating, so it's becoming myopic. In this case, does the person actually absolutely stop seeing everything that at a distance? No. Our brain is still able to, to see, okay, that looks like a tree, that looks like a plant, that looks like a leaf. So how is our brain actually functioning? In this case, there is this knowledge base that is already created because we were this, this person was, was seeing beforehand. So he knows what, what a tree looks like or has a silhouette of, of a tree look like or what a car would look like other ways. So now that just by gauging a silhouette, you would know that that's actually an object of interest. Same way, if you actually look with both eyes, you have, you have an estimate of depth. However, if a person loses one eye, it still has an estimate of, of depth. So you still know how far ahead that, that actually means. It's still 20 meters, 30 meters. And this is because that cognition is still there in your brain that even you see one image, you can still figure out the depth. So there's a lot of work that is happening in the industry right now for mono depth estimation. So you just take a monocular camera and you're automatically, automatically able to figure out how far away that is or to interpolate the depth in 3D, which becomes very useful for the autonomous drive field. Finally, and very importantly, let's come to data science. A data science would be specifically the models where the processes or algorithms, they extract information, knowledge, and insights from many structural and unstructured data. So the difference between data science and machine learning typically is in data science, the data is the goal. So that is gold for us. So we want to find out as much as possible from this data and of course, the, the model, uh, you know, at the end of it is important, but not as important, right? So there is systematically more importance done uh, to, to feature selection, to, to feature mining uh, in order to, if there is a you know, lack of missing data, how to, how to fill that up. So the data mining takes an important stand in, in this case. Uh, ideally, the, the data models at the end of it could be easy classifiers. They could be regression models. However, like I said, the importance is on the data. A very easy example of this would be finding gold from a rock. Let's say you have a rock of gold and the goal is for you to filter this, this gold out. What is more important is the sieve through which you, you pass this gold. That is that more important or is the rock more important? Of course, the rock is more important than gold. So what do you do in this case? In this case, you try to figure out what is the best way in, so that you actually put this data through the sieve or this filter so that you get the gold out and separate it from the dust, right? So think of data scientists need to think about themselves as people who can refine this gold from this huge chunk of, of rock, which otherwise people might throw away, which is you know no not usable that much. But you want to maximize the output from a data, and that is what a data scientist would typically do. Uh, another example of what uh, you know a, a data scientist you know, typically looks like an example would be again, in, in this particular example, you see there are some occlusion. So there may be a pedestrian one behind the other, in which case, how do you ensure that these occluded objects are still visible? So, you know, interpolating partial bounding boxes using GANs, you know, synthetic data, uh, co you know, combined with, with real data, these could be different ways in which uh, you can actually implement data science for the autonomous drive field. So those were the typical examples. Hope you liked it.